Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Privacy Rules Privacy Espresso, a concise, effective, to the point advice from data privacy experts and cybersecurity experts worldwide. Today, we have with us Alexander Moller, senior lawyer at Breakfast Advocate Firma in Norway and works in the Department of Technology, Industry, and, and Trade. We are going to speak uh, with Alexander about the use of control measures in Norway and also under GDPR. So, hello, Alexander. Happy New Year. And hello. How are Happy control measures regulated in Norway? Thank you. Well, I mean, employees on par with any other data subject, they do have the right to, to privacy when performing their functions for their employer. However, an employer may have legitimate grounds for implementing uh, so-called control measures towards their employees. Now, under Norwegian law, the term control measure is to be understood broadly. And when uncertain, the Norwegian Data Protection Authority recommends that an employer treats a measure as being a control measure and follows the applicable legal requirements. Now, under Norwegian law, control measures that entail the processing of personal data are subject to the rules of the Norwegian Personal Data Act, including the GDPR as incorporated therein. Now, the Personal Data Act Section 4 governs the geographical scope of the act and is to be interpreted in the same manner as the GDPR Article 3. And the Personal Data Act applies to the processing of personal data carried out in connection with the activities of the business of a data controller or a data processor in Norway, regardless of whether the processing takes place in the European Economic Area or not. And with respect to the applicability of the Norwegian Personal Data Act, the question then becomes whether the processing is of a stable is a stable arrangement and of such a permanent nature that Norwegian law should apply the so-called establishment criterion. And the nationality or, or residence of the data subject concerned is more important to this assessment. Now, if, for instance, a foreign company has a subsidiary or a branch in Norway, such subsidiary or branch can be considered to be established uh, in Norway for the purposes of the Norwegian Personal Data Act meaning that the processing activities of that subsidiary or that branch, including its control measures, would be subject to Norwegian privacy legislation. However, Norwegian Personal Data Act only applies to the processing of personal data conducted by or which can be inextricably linked to uh, the Norwegian subsidiary or branch, as we saw in the uh, Google Spain judgment. Now, a well-known case from the Norwegian Data Protection Authority uh, from 2018 could serve to illustrate this. The case concerned a Swedish limited liability company acting as a data controller that had a branch in Norway, though this branch had no involvement with the processing of the personal data in question. So while there was a corporate connection uh, to Norway, the Norwegian Data Protection Authority found that the, the Norwegian Personal Data Act did not apply to the branch, as it as was a Swedish LLC that processed the data. Now, as such, the processing activity uh, in question was governed by Swedish privacy law. And with respect to controllers, um, and provided that it is the foreign-based employers which solely decides the purposes of the, the processing of personal data in connection with uh, the control measure and the means for which that purpose is to be achieved, Norwegian Privacy Law will not apply. Now, if Norwegian Privacy Law uh, applies, an employer would need to ensure compliance with the rules of the GDPR, of course, including having a lawful basis for its processing, and, and otherwise ensuring compliance with the rest of the, the rules of the GDPR. But from a purely privacy-based standpoint, there are no aspects of the Norwegian Personal Data Act which uh, differentiates from the GDPR with respect to control measures. And it is, in addition to the Norwegian Personal Data Act, Norwegian labor law also contains procedural rules for employers wishing to implement control measures. Control measures by employers are regulated by the Norwegian Working Environment Act, but there are also two regulations which governs camera surveillance at the workplace and employers' access to the employees' email inboxes and other electronically stored material. These particular rules are applicable to local workers, not to foreign workers insofar as they can be considered postal workers in accordance with uh, the EU Directive 96-71-EC. So for a worker to be a postal worker, it must be employed by a foreign entity uh, that in connection with its provision of services sends employees that are those employees to a place of business in this case uh, in Norway and that this place of business must be part of the same group of companies and this must also mean this arrangement must also mean that the employees uh, will work in a country other than which the employment relationship is usually related to and lastly the engagement uh, of a posted worker must be of a temporary nature and there are no restrictions under the Norwegian labor law governing the use of control measures against um, posted workers 
Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Alexander, for this introduction. So the Norwegian labor laws on control measures could apply even if Norwegian privacy legislation does not. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. As long as the foreign-based employer either itself or through a subsidiary or a branch directs the control measure towards the local workers in Norway, the procedural labor laws apply, irrespective of whether Norwegian privacy legislation does. And if Norwegian labor law applies, um, an employer may only implement control measures uh, in relation to employers when such measures are objectively justified by circumstances relating to the undertaking of the employer and the purposes which, is try, which, is, uh, which is, uh, it tries to achieve, and only provided uh, if the measure does not put an undue strain on the employers in question. So in order for the control measure to be legal, this specific balancing of interest must be in the employer's favor. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alexander. And is this assessment similar to the balancing of, of interest under GDPR, Article 6? No, the, the assessment is not unlike the balancing of interest necessary to utilize um, legitimate interest as a lawful basis under uh, Article 6, 1F of the GDPR. It actually follows from the preparatory works of the Norwegian Working Environment Act that, that some of the same conditions under Article 6, 1F of the GDPR will be met if the legal conditions for carrying out the the control measures are present under uh, the Norwegian Working Environment Act. And um, the, the requirement for objective justification means that an employer must have objective grounds that are rooted in its business. And secondly, these grounds must cover all individuals that are subject to the control measure. Uh, meaning it here that a control measure that is objective towards one employee is not necessarily objective towards another. And the, the preparatory works of the Norwegian Working Environment Act states that Objective grounds may be related to the employer's working conditions um, for its employees or the health conditions of, of said employees or otherwise of a technological, economic, social or security based uh, nature. And lastly, the control measure must be suitable for achieving the purpose of the, the measure and it must cease when the, that purpose is no longer valid. So any employer, employers wishing to implement a control measure in, in Norway uh, should compile a document substantiating the, the objective grounds for the contemplated measure, why the measure is suitable for achieving its intended purpose, and that the measure will not put an undue strain on the employees. And naturally, many of the same factors that are relevant for a data, prote uh, data protection impact assessment or for ensuring the adherence to the principles contained in GDPR Article 5 will also be applicable in this assessment. Now, as to the second condition, as to the measure must not put an undue strain on the employees, this assessment is twofold. First, the, the mes measure must be proportional with respect to what it seeks to achieve and the, the consequences that it may have uh, for the affected employees. And secondly, the measure must be limited in scope and otherwise to what is strictly necessary uh, to achieve the purpose of the measure. And the employer must assess whether other methods uh, could be used instead and it must choose the, the least intrusive uh, measure. After having uh, ensured that the, these two conditions are met. An employer is obliged to, um, as early as possible, but at least before implementing the measure, to discuss the, the needs, design, implementation, and major changes to control measures with uh, the employee representatives. Um, but there is no obligation for an employer to negotiate or to reach an agreement with these representatives with respect to the measure. But the employee representatives and the safety representatives of the employer must be given sufficient time, at least, to raise any objections or, or propose any suggestions. And lastly, before implementing the measure, the employer must provide all employees affected by the measure with, with um, information regarding the purpose of the control measures, any practical consequences of the measures, including how the, the measures will be implemented and conducted. And lastly, the assumed duration of the control measure. Now, the duration is a key element in evaluating whether the measures puts an undue strain on employees. And after having implemented the, the measures, the employer must, uh, in close cooperation with employer representatives, regularly evaluate the need uh, for those control measures. Okay, perfect. Alexander, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting explanation on how it works in Norway. And we've seen that there are a lot of relations also with the, the activities in Europe and, and the GDPR that is uh, applicable in, in your uh, country. Uh, so thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you to all our listeners for being with us uh, uh, today. I hope to see you all very, very soon again. Bye, everyone.